<laughs> well, I can't argue with that. Hey everyone, welcome back to Dracky Cup 14, the tournament which I'm casting but not uploading. Terrible, terrible. Anyway, this is another game from uh, Group C. This is going to be between Arik and Jesse, and we've got the map picks over here. Looks like the factions are just going to be... Uh, did I see this right? It's Saban versus Saban. Uh-huh. The classic weeb matchup. Very good. And uh, the map picks are going to be the Boneyard for Jesse and Kartoba for Arik. And we'll see how it goes. Jesse, of course, new player to the scene. So... Arik is really not bad at all. Uh, I didn't know this guy at all until he came onto the scene, I think in JC12, but... Maybe he was even 13. This might be only a second tournament. I guess I don't know. Uh, but everybody knows him by now for being a rail spammer, so especially Captain Pink. <laughs> and he's good at what he does. So I'm gonna guess that that's the game plan. There's a lot of rail guns. And, uh, oh my gosh, I just broke my nail clippers. I can stop fiddling with things while I'm casting. <laughs> Let's see what Jesse's got cooked up here, because this looks kind of interesting. He's got the base runner still. I don't know what's happening with the salvagers. So the carrier, uh, like the salvagers have to drop off at the edge of the carrier, and so I think that when this guy finishes mining, he'll have to move over here, and then he'll drop off and then come back. Hey, it's Ty guy. Yeah, especially this close to Homeworld 3A. Eh? But no, ridiculous. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta freaking learn DOK. It's the best game of all time. Probe takes a bunch of damage here, by the way, but it doesn't end up going down. Yeah, we need more players. Honestly, when Fear plays DOK, he's like good, actually. Oh yay! Very nice. Phoenix Hill will finally stop complaining. But this is what Arik always does, which is interesting. At the start of the game, he's not going to go SC first or something, he starts with LAVs. And one thing I complained about when he first started was that he would just keep them with the base runner, but this is exactly what you want to see, where he moves them out across the field and gets something done. Good, good. That is the way. And uh, you can see the base runner for Jesse is going to go out on the field too, but he knows that this is coming, so... It would have been nice for him to uh, be a little bit more careful with this base runner, because he'll probably lose it. Um, these LABs are just gonna, just gonna own him. And I saw Arik touching, uh, Railgun Fab, but he ended up cancelling it. I think he should, I think he should get it, because, uh, that's his thing. But it looks like instead he's gonna go for the SC first, so. Well, this is not SC first, the build, it's SC, like, for Railgun Fab. <clears throat> My tongue hurts so much, jeez. <laughs> I bit my tongue the other day. Like, really hard. And now it just, it's like pain. That's why I didn't cast yesterday, I'm not even kidding. Aelin gonna get deployed. Probe survives on 2 HP, what a legend. When you've got the SC out here and you have the ALMs powered up, it might be possible to hold off, but uh-oh, uh, Jesse actually has not powered up anything, so... That would certainly help if you would put the power into the system. Arek, for his part, he generally has only ever put power into the logistics, even when his carrier is forward, and he manages to get stuff done with it. Like, ALMs are annoying as heck, so very, very good to power that system up. Carrier power doesn't do you much if you don't have it allocated. Right now it's kind of a two-base setup, but, uh... Yeah, the, the thing is, when you're up on two-base like this, your opponent can very often push you off of it. You see, with the SC healing, this is actually a pretty good trade being taken by uh, by Jesse, all things considered, but um, still, he's not going to be able to win it. And again, this ALM won't do anything unless he gets power, so... Well, uh, I kind of take it back. He's almost winning this trade. Like, maybe this looks pretty good for him, actually. The SC can go cover the main, and the carrier will drive out here. But in general, if your opponent is on one base, it's fine to be on one base as well. So if you're being attacked, you can always go back to one base and then uh, get up to two, like he's doing now, when you feel like you're a bit safer. And he's getting attacked as well. You love to see it. It's ABs. Unfortunately, there are railguns already for Arik, but he hasn't built any, so... I take it all back. There they are on the queue. And he's got a big float of RU, so you might as well get back so as well. Good upgrade. No, it looks like it'll be AV tech instead. And that makes sense too. You want to get the armor upgrades for them. So. 
Looks like this probe will die. That's not the initial probe, though. That's curious. I don't know how that thing exists then. Yeah, this space runner will eventually be forfeit. Uh, you know what? That's a new base runner. I guess the first one died or something. Crazy. A little bit of a surround here, but Ari can punch through this end of it. If he focus fire here, he might have been able to take out this guy, but unfortunately not going to be there for him. This carrier here is having fun. I don't know. I don't know what it's doing, but you can hear that sound. Gosh, the camera is just like bouncing like crazy. Let's get away from here. That's making my that's making my head spin. And it's fighter and gunship for Jesse. All right, I like it. Building another base runner, so I think this is the third one. Yeah, double sick carry. By the way, if you're Arik here, you're pretty comfortable doing like a two base play because of this probe, right? You can actually see that your opponent is not on three base, so that's a good move. You just keep this guy here and you know that everything's fine. In fact, one thing I like to do to troll people is you bring the base runner over and drop targeting jammers here and then the salvagers can't open the wreck, which is funny. But, uh... <laughs> Nah, Coalition Air is great, especially against Railguns. Actually, this is, you know, this is a good use case. Honestly, LEVs do a pretty decent job at killing Interceptors, but, uh, Strike Fighters they do much better at, so... Yeah, Air can certainly be the answer here. Might even end up picking up a gunship, but, uh, I think that Strike Fighters would probably be better here. Check the resources tab, you can see he definitely has the money for it, so he just needs to be building them. Hasn't started yet. Hopefully he'll, hopefully he'll get on it. Yep, there we go. He's building for you. He doesn't have the production upgrade though. Uh oh. So actually, he's building these one at a time. And that might be part of the reason for this float. It doesn't look like he has a, a huge float right now, but if you've got two units queued, you really do, right? Yeah, getting the production upgrade will certainly help you here. Arak has it. He has one of them. Yeah, you always want to get that production upgrade if you can... An entire minute? Well, that's more than we've gotten for the last couple months. <laughs> anyway, you definitely want to get the uh, the production upgrade if you can... Uh, if you can afford to be building off more than one line. Because otherwise, yeah, you will you will float. There's just no like, two ways about it. He's even queued up a gunship now. Gunships are very expensive, even in terms of like time to build them, so... You can smoke those, gonna keep his base runner safe for now. But it looks like he will launch the air, he kinda needs to. And uh, yeah, the strike fighters wanna be targeting the railguns, which is what he's doing. Base runner goes down though, so there's no threat of a TJ here. And you can see LAV is not able to kill the strike fighters. Although if it goes in for another pass, that might change. It yeah, looks like he is going to get away with this. Another one launches. <clears throat> a little bit dangerous actually to be out on your own like this uh, when there's like the base runner in tow. Like this thing might actually end up going down. It's not careful. Oh, you can micro it to safety now. Uh, just a little bit too late. Just a little bit too late. And I think that air was a good choice, but he really needs a production upgrade. And again, the the float will only continue to balloon here, so you've, you've gotta you've gotta fix that by getting this production upgrade, or else you're always gonna have trouble. Also, SCAA really doesn't make sense here because your opponent, even if he does have air, you've got air as well. You can fight it. So uh, yeah, well, I am too. I am too. He plays two base, you know, and right now he's on three again. But people don't really do that very much. It's fun. I like seeing it. You know, he plays 1v1 like it's 3v3, and I guess it's kind of refreshing to see. He guns the Air Force for, uh, for Jesse again. This time there are missile batteries, but there's only one so far. Here comes the second one.
The gunship can tank though, right? So he's not gonna die here. Does have to be a little careful with it though. Yeah, it's gonna lose a strike fighter there. The second one's gonna jump in, but that will certainly lead to his death. But the gunship gets out. This is what gunships can do, like one of the reasons why I think they're good in this kind of scenario is that they can survive the anti-air a little bit, but you have to be careful with how you micro the air or else you'll, you'll end up losing, uh, losing a lot of units. Yes, he does. It's true. Hey, carry production upgrade! Good, good. This is what you need. <laughs> Well said, A-game, well said. I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> Strike Fighter could kill the probe, by the way, but it's not usually good to waste the ammo, especially when, yeah, the space fighter can just do it himself. So. Sometimes when I have interceptors, especially as Galzian, there's not quite as much anti-air available. Oh, the Strike Fighter docked. That's unfortunate. But I'll just send, like, one interceptor to shoot the probe down. But the problem is, you do lose uh, the ammo, and that can, that can come back to bite you. Now it looks like RX is gonna make a front on his opponent's main here, and this is this is gonna be very very difficult to hold off, um, because now you can't really use the air. Look, there's four missile batteries here. That's a lot. That's more than two. Uh, <laughs> so now the gunship can't tank at all. It'll just die in like one volley. Um, and I just don't know what's gonna fight these railguns. So not to mention the mortars can be effective against LEVs too. So he's gonna maneuver the carrier up here, although he's sacrificing two base for it, which is pretty rough. Uh, and I just, I don't really know what um, Jesse's gonna pull out of the hat for this one. But we'll see, Arik is not pushing it super hard. If he knew what the army looked like on the other side, he'd probably just be going in like crazy, but... You know, that's, that's caster vision, he sees this, it's a little bit harder to go in. Here comes the gunship, but like I said, it really cannot tank here. Oh boy! Ah, and it's gonna end up going down. Yeah, that, that's why I said this is going to be very difficult to pull off. And it's not like air is an ace up the sleeve either if you can kill off the missile batteries. Like, if it's only one gunship and one strike fighter. So. Even if you can make some Hail Mary play to kill off all the missile batteries, it's not like you would just win the game off of that. Here comes the strike fighter, but this is, this is full lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've got more than enough to deal with that. And you can see Railguns for Arak just kind of doing what they do best. I think he has Armor 3 Mag Excel, yeah, against no upgrades for Jesse, so... There are some Railguns here, even this one up on high ground, but... They, they're not the same, you know? <laughs> Railguns for Arak and Railguns for Jesse are not the same right now. Not to mention, uh, I think the entire army just got wiped anyway, so... <laughs> LAV's gonna clean up this last Railgun up here, but... They might not even kill it in time, looks like this carrier will die first. That's interesting. You know, normally when the carrier blows up, all the other units on the map die, but he, like, deployed an ALM, and it actually managed to survive for a moment. Because I guess it landed after the carrier blew up. Never seen that before. Anyway, Arik gonna do what Arik does best, and he does smash game one. Let's jump into game two. I think what will be more entertaining to see later today is uh, Arek versus Descara, which is also on the docket to be cast. And now we jump into Kartova, which is Arek's map. Excellent pick, by the way. Because, because look, it's Kartova. You can drive on- no, you can't drive on the top of it. I wish. But it's a very big open map, you know, like... If you're a fan of railgun spamming, this is the map for you, I tell you. He's gonna bring the red, know what I mean? That's even his colors. See? <laughs> yeah. But hey man, I've been there too. It's a good way to be. Base runner retired comes out from Jesse, he's got LAV fab started. So see what the plan is this time. I've always said, if you feel like your opponent outmatches you in DOK, you should just go crazy and try and like play like a madman. It's more fun that way. More fun to play, more fun to cast. So, I like this build so far, retiring the base runner and getting the LAV fed. I want to see him just go crazy and build like a million LAVs. 
Right now he's making more uh, salvagers here, but... As for Arik, it's just kind of more of the same. Again, he keeps the base burner. And you can see at the end of the last game, he had a lot of carrier power, and I think most of it just came from artifacts, but I didn't actually check to see what his carrier power was. But... Yeah, see, there's something Phoenix Phoenixu and I can agree on. Just play like a madman. It's more fun. It's more fun. It'll kind of backfire against Discara, I guess, because he's like... He's like... The best at freaking, uh, not losing... Not losing to early rushes, but... Oh no, Jesse's getting an SC. And yeah, he did do that last game. Uh, I, I would always caution against this build in particular, where you get LAV Fab and then you get a, a support cruiser. Because you can't, um... Yeah, if you play like this, uh, you can't get your eco set up as fast, and you also can't build any military units while the SC is queuing, so... It turns out to just be slower on every count. So if you want to go eco, get your SC before anything else, and if you want to go army, well, don't build an SC, you have to keep building army, so... You know, there was a DOK player named Madman who played in one tournament. Oops, I turned the music off. You're ditching me for a 3v3? What What are you doing, man? Don't you want to watch the cast instead? Oh, I feel so betrayed. <laughs> we have five in here. Alright. Phoenix. Oh my gosh. Heresy. Heresy. Somebody banned this, man. Railgun Fab for, uh... <laughs> getting 3v3 Bozo? Dude, you know what I'm doing. I'm casting, man. I'm busy. Anyway, uh... <laughs> oh, more heresy in the chat. Terrible. Arik's gonna pick off that, uh... That probe, and he does have Railgun Fab coming. Hey! Jesse powered up the ALMs. Very good. Although, unfortunately, this time, this one is gonna die. Let's see if the carrier can get a kill on the fader right here. Uh. Gone. No, not quite. <laughs> Go wild. <laughs> Artifact extraction comes out for Arik, by the way, and he will expand. This is his MO. Hey, production upgrade. See, Jesse is learning. He's like the Omnidroid from the Incredibles. ALM nearly got a shot off. I think that would have killed, like, maybe two of these things. Yeah. Alright, gonna pick up the second artifact. I'd like to extract that as well. When he gets railguns out on the field, that's when things start to change here, because now he can... Now he can, like, siege down the ALMs. And we saw him doing that last time. Uh, and then, you know, what kind of broke that was the air, I suppose, right? Um, and then Arik had to just go back and get some anti-air defenses set up. To be fair for Jesse, I think that was really the right call. It's just he didn't have enough of it. It was because of carrier production upgrade. But this time, this time he's ready. So yeah, he's gonna make the same call again. He goes for fighter and gunship tech. And I think it's the right call. I think that's really how to play this. So, yeah, I, I approve. I approve. Right now, though, he's just building a bunch of LEVs. He's even getting the armor upgrade. I think that's good, too. You know, you are fighting these LEVs in the midfield. And when it's LEV rail, uh, the railguns don't contribute too much to the fight. Um, so getting a bit of, like, a bit of armor upgrade for your LEVs, that can really help you uh, take these out, and then you'll be able to fight the railguns. Wait, what? What you talking about, Willis? By the way, a little run by abilities get slapped down over here. Both players, by the way, not interested in RUs on the second base, seemingly. Oh no, he's in lower bracket. He's expert marksman member on the uh, battle floor. Here's the railguns. They're actually up on a high ground. I, I said that they won't contribute that much to the fight, but it's kind of halfway true because... They, they will do damage, especially when they're up on high ground like that. 
Now that railguns can hit reliably, plus they have the armor break, which can be helpful, and Savon rails have the mark target ability, which increases the damage of the uh, LAVs against the target, so... It's only kind of halfway true, what I was saying. By the way, a couple railguns for Jesse are out here as well. This would be a good time for uh, TJ, but it looks like the space is going to die. But yeah, I think really he does want... Like, a gunship would be good here, and maybe some more strike fighters along with it as well. I don't know if he's got the money, but... Oh, yeah, he's got the money. A gunship costs 100 RUs, to be fair. I mean, it'd be good to... It'd be good to double up on RU miners over here, but... He definitely could. We check Arik, by the way. Again, he's expanding while he's ahead. Expanding while he's attacking. Here comes another SC, and he will uh, move his carrier out onto the third. That's what you love to see. You're not one to talk. Your your Battlefy name is like Eklojo's Steam name. <laughs> but it's true. I think Battlefy has like you can connect it to some other accounts or something. Battlefy is a weird platform. It's worked for us, but. If I was a bit less lazy, maybe I'd just toast a website on my own that I could do this stuff. Little run by from Jesse over here. There's a lot of power in this carrier though, and I think that actually might deny all of this. Meanwhile, the fight is being taken over here. Now that there's no railguns to defend, this looks a little bit grim. And again, air tech is done, but it's just not being used. Oops. You know what would be the really, like, the coolest thing is if we could, like, implement it as part of GE mod. That would be sick. Yeah, Phoenix, it would like the blind faction thing. That was terrible. That actually, like, broke the meta. Because it turned out, you know, random was kind of the only faction you could play. Right? Because if you don't know what your opponent is playing, then it changes every single build that you do. Yeah, so... That was, that was, that was dark times. Literally. See what I'm doing there? Anyway, Arik is building anti-air now. So, even if we do see air from Jesse, it'll be kind of countered. That's kind of rough. But he never built any air anyway, it's kind of funny. Maybe this is some big brain thing to make Arek overbuild on missile batteries, but I, I, I doubt it. <laughs> You know what would be cool? By the way, this is a ton of freaking railguns for Arik. And as usual, he's got really good upgrades too. He's lacking armor 3, but that's it. So. Yeah, you can kind of... You can kind of see where this is going. <laughs> Again, similar to last game, uh, Arik's army is just very, very superior here, so... Yeah, you did, but I didn't like the suggestion. And Jesse bringing the carry out to the forward again here, but, um, to the forward? Did I say that? <laughs> it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be difficult to fight all these railguns here. <laughs> Especially he hasn't powered up the weapons, but... Well, it wouldn't have made too much difference either. One thing that, uh, Arik should do here, though, is use Spark Target on one of these railguns. You can actually boost the damage a lot. Because like every other railgun gets plus 25% now, and that's, well, that stacks up pretty quick. That stacks up pretty quick. Either way, Carrier goes down for Arik. Or, sorry, for uh, Jesse. And Arik will take the 2 0 pretty easy. More interested to see a series versus Discara, which I think we'll cast next, but I'll check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let's move on to the next one.